section 3.11. In section 3.11, we show how to find E to a matrix power. Well, question number one, why care about such things? Well, let us go back to section 3.10. You may wonder why we have these formulas. It's not so easy to explain in all details why we use these formulas. But let me give you at least some insight. In order to deduce these formulas, we go back to calculus 2. Please take a look at the Maclaurin series for each x. If in this formula we replace x by a t and 1 by i, we get this. We use this formula in order to define e to a t. Observe that these two formulas resemble the sum of first two and three terms of this infinite series. Details are pretty complicated, but this gives you at least some idea why all of a sudden we get formula number one and formula number two. Once again, details are pretty involved. This does not give you a complete picture, but it gives you at least some ideas. Why all of a sudden we have here t squared, two factorial? Well, because here we have t squared, two factorial, and so on. Problem is, it's really hard to use this formula because for a given square matrix, we know how to find its square, a cube, but note that if power is big, it's a pretty laborious process to find the power of a square matrix. Know that in addition to this, we have to add up all these terms. Moreover, this is not a finite sum. This is an infinite sum. Therefore, question is, is it possible somehow to simplify this formula? The answer is yes. This theorem says that E to A T can be found in a much simpler way. E to A T is equal to X of T times X inverse of zero. Well, question is, what is X of T? X of t is a so-called fundamental matrix solution. In order to create a fundamental matrix solution, step one, we find an particular linearly independent solutions of this equation, and then put these solutions together in order to create a fundamental matrix solution. So, for example, if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, column number 1 is a particular solution number 1, column number 2 is a particular solution number 2, and column number 3 is a particular solution number 3. So, here's an example. Find E to A T where A is this matrix. Step 1, find three particular linearly independent solutions. We apply standard procedure. Step one, characteristic polynomial. Characteristic polynomial tells us that there are three distinct eigenvalues, one, three, and five. For each eigenvalue, we find a corresponding eigenvector. Eigenvector number one for lambda is equal to one. Eigenvector number two for lambda is equal to three. Eigenvector number three for a lambda is equal to five. Therefore, particular solutions of our system will be this, this, and this. We put these matrix columns together to create 
a fundamental matrix solution. Then we evaluate these metrics at zero. We replace T by zero. We get this. We find the inverse of this matrix by any method done. And lastly, we multiply X of T by X of zero inverse. The result falls. E to a t is equal to this. In particular, if t is equal to one, e to a is equal to this. Done. Think about questions. Could you repeat that? Yes. So here is our formula. This formula tells us how to find e to a t. In order to find e to a t, step one, find x of t. In order to find x of t, we find three linearly independent particular solutions of our system. For example, in our case, particular solution number one is this, particular solution number two is this, particular solution number three is this. Do you want me to show how we find these particular solutions? I'm good there. So we put these matrix columns together. Of course, we have to move is inside. We put these matrix columns together. So this is particular solution number one, particular solution number two, particular solution number three in order to find X of T. This is step one. Step two, I'll replace t by zero everywhere and find the inverse of the resulting matrix. Done. Lastly, multiply this by this. It's over here. Here's the result, and this is the answer. E to a t is equal to this. Done. If it's still too fast, I can repeat once again. No, I'm good. Other questions? Why do we do this? There are lots of applications of this formula. One application, it's a pretty nice theoretical result. It turns out that this formula, which is hard to use formula, we have an infinite sum of matrices. It turns out that this formula and this formula, both formulas give us same result. And we call the resulting matrix E to A T. Uh, does that hold for like uh, a different number? So like two instead of E? Of course, we can come up with the analogies of this formula. But in this course, we discuss E to A T. Wait, why do we want to find each AT? Well, once again, applications of this theorem are not that easy to explain. I'm trying to give you at least some insight why care. It turns out that if we consider this infinite sum, this infinite sum converges to this expression. Okay, thank you.